Hi, welcome to my virtualization tutorial. This video, I'll teach you Andrew file system. So today my agenda is uh, giving some introduction about AFS and we'll discuss about what is AFS and overview of OpenAFS as well and the advantages and disadvantages of AFS and uh, finally I will discuss about some alternative solutions which exist in the market. Okay, about AFS, it's uh, started as a distributed file system research project by Carnegie Mellon University. It's purely based on the network client server architecture it follows and basically the intention of this project is to provide a unified view of shared access directories on servers and workstations whatever connecting to that uh, uh, server which basically provides a unified access across the uh, network. So this is something like an uh, VFS virtual file system. So different type of uh, you know storages or I mean uh, the file system sorry. Uh, the file systems are connected to this and uh, you get a, a unified access across your workstations. And IBM uh, is at present supporting uh, this project and um, there is an open uh, source version available which is called as open AFS and that's my uh, point of uh, discussion uh, today. Uh, open AFS is a uh, open source and it is uh, for development purpose. So what is open AFS? It's a distributed file system which uses set of trusted okay you just need to you know understand, uh, understand this set of trusted servers to present a homogeneous location transparent file namespace to all the client workstations. So the namespace start with the root okay this is the root uh, root namespace. Uh, under root namespace you can have different sites you can say that this is site 1 this is site 2 and this is site 3 different uh, sites okay what is site uh, site is uh, uh, we can say that uh, it, uh, it's a cell okay site is you know, we can call it as a cell um, this is of um, uh, running its own uh, AFS system each site uh, I mean uh, each site has its own AFS system okay so this is independent site each site is independent of each other C1 is independent of independent and C2 is independent C3 is independent each site is of uh, independent and it can connect to a root namespace now uh, this site hosts a set of csv files and images this site uh, hosts set of docs and this provides set of packages and isos uh, this is the way it is totally uh, defined and all this uh, comes from different uh, domains you can look at here this is a different domain uh, this is different domain karunia.edu and uh, this is abc.com and example.com so it comes from three different domains okay so when 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 uh, uh, user access it from the user point of view uh, he sees uh, everything from this namespace he really uh, doesn't know how these files are coming from and uh, so coming from which location so that's why we call it as location transparent okay no need to know that this user he gets a unified view of okay uh, csv image docs and whatever uh, available in the root namespace so user point of view, it's a homogeneous view uh, across the network. Fine. Uh, overview of uh, AFS administration. How the open AFS system is being administrated? It can it it has different set of servers and services which is actually managing the entire system. So the first one uh, we call it as a file server. Okay, the file server. So this takes care of file management. So okay, uh, what is file management? File management is uh, uh, opening a file, closing a file, read and write, update and so on. Uh, we can say that uh, this is basically a file management. Also, it takes care of symbolic links uh, creation and the mapping of uh, that links with the actual document. The normal, uh, the ln command that does not work uh, with the symbolic uh, link creation. So there is a, a different version of command available for open AFS and also it provides set of locks uh, locks basically used to uh, provide an uh, you know what I can say the consistency it provides a consistency across the different uh, documents and also it ensures that uh, the authorized uh, person is accessing the documents and uh, so that's the role of the file, file server 
and the very important one uh, that is called uh, overseas server uh, overseas server basically used to monitor uh, this is this is uh, actually reducing a lot of headache for the system administrator system administrator no need to monitor each and every time this itself uh, the overseas server itself monitor the entire system and also it is responsible for restarting the service which has already failed okay it composed of initially i have mentioned uh, various uh, services these services you know goes down it need to be started again uh, that 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 job is uh, taken care of by this over the server this restart the process which has stopped previously and also this accepts request from the admin so what kind of uh, request uh, give uh, raised by the admin or given by the admin is normally admin request for configuration changes and so on and some acl policies this all get uh, accepted by the overseas server it takes care of it uh, on behalf of admin and the protection server protection server is basically to enforce a set of securities and this uh, basically maps the set of uh, identities and also helps uh, administrator to define acls and uh, granting of permissions managing of groups uh, this is you know makes the job of the admin very simple um, you can have a managed groups and on that groups you can apply set of policies so that that is applicable to the set of users that greatly reduce the time of the system administrator obviously uh, this is normally exists across almost all the systems okay so the volume server uh, that's the next uh, important server this provides an interface through uh, which you can create and delete and move uh, and replicate your volumes so this contains the list of volumes okay all those volumes contributed uh, to this namespace so that that is uh, available here and also it supports backup backup is very important and if something goes wrong you can recover your files from the backup uh, so absolutely this is a very good uh, option for a uh, system administrator in case one of your disk failed and your data is corrupted still you can recover your data uh, from the other desk okay you can if it is failed if you have a backup of this data you can recover it uh, to the another system so that or the original system so you can uh, gain your data back and volume location server basically this, this one uh, act as a catch and uh, maintains a complete list of volume locations and uh, basically when a client uh, request uh, uh, data this first go and look at the uh, volume location server if this does, do not have the data then it goes to the volume server that is it comes to this volume server for checking the data and salvage a service this attempts to repair disk corruption okay now uh, there is a possibility that uh, one of your disk uh, get corrupted okay you have a disk uh, due to different reasons like a uh, fragmentation uh, this uh, and or otherwise unexpected some you know failures would happen that will correct a portion of your desk so this uh, try to attempt uh, to um, resolve the uh, you know this uh, problem this try to uh, recover from this problem so that it ensures that your data is available okay the update server this is very important this enables your network uh, to host your shared documents consistently and by uh, checking all the version of the software installed across all your systems every system in the uh, network should run the same version of the software i mean uh, the afs system right open, open afs system which needs to maintain the same version of the software to provide uh, consistency across uh, mul across your system so this guarantees that all your server machines are running the same version of the software process so that it will bring down a lot of uh, problems and the final uh, one is a backup server uh, backup server enables the backupping process for the administrator um, that is uh, this this basically uh, maintains the information in the backup and also database backup uh, data from AFS volume. So the next one is the backup server. Backup server actually uh, helps the administrator to take a uh, backup of uh, volumes. So in case of a failure, this will be available for later access. 
Now Kerberos uh, KDC, this is uh, basically provides verifying the identity. I will be elaborately discussing about in the upcoming slide uh, how the uh, identity is being uh, handled. And when a client uh, actually requests uh, what happens, uh, so this basically looks that whether the catch manager is you know having an uh, data or not. If in case the catch manager doesn't have the data, it looks to uh, go volume manager, sorry, uh, volume server, okay. And uh, from this, uh, you know, all these desktop machines or workstations, what happens, the catch manager actually runs on each and every of the workstations. When it opens set of uh, uh, directories uh, from the open AFS system, this all, uh, you know, files get cached on your local workstation so that that makes the, uh, you know, accessing efficient, okay. So let's discuss all these, uh, you know, one by one, all those Kerberos, uh, you know, for authentication. Almost I have discussed all, all these things uh, in the previous diagram itself. And the very important one is uh, the cell, uh, that is a site running its own AFS system, and it is again independent. So with respect to the users, they are accessing or, you know, uh, they are, they are, they are uh, you know, getting an access to a global uh, file space or namespace. That's way. Uh, that's a way we can uh, say that. Some set of advantages are there for each and every uh, component we have discussed. Catch manager maintains the information about the identities of the users logged into the machine, and also it finds the request of uh, finds the request on data, and uh, and also keep the chunk of retrieved files in the local disk so that the retrieval of uh, that particular file is. Uh, what uh, that makes the uh, you know retriever of file efficient and also location independence is another ad advantage user doesn't need to know about you know where these files are coming from and scalability uh, this basically provides a scalability across your system so the architectural goal of the AFS is uh, 114,000 uh, is to 1 fine and the security uh, standpoint of view, lot of advantages. It uses, uh, you know, doesn't use as plain password. Uh, the passwords are not exchanged and because it supports a federated identity. So that uh, secures uh, your system. So this is having lot of advantages, federated authentication. Uh, so that's a beautiful one. Uh, so you can also have a support for ACLs that's absolutely uh, controls you know, fine, in a in a fine grained way you can control your access to your uh, data volumes and uh, replicated AFS volumes that's a, another important component and uh, frequently accessed data are replicated uh, that is normally a read only copy is maintained across different sites so that uh, when a client tries to access it goes and access to a data volume which is near to uh, its location. So we can say that it's a kind of a load balancing so that, um, uh, you know, you are kind of, uh, you know, managing your network, uh, the data, you're providing the data at the, you know, end of your, uh, you know, near to the workstation, we can say. Okay. So the robustness, uh, that's the next, uh, another important advantage. Uh, the uh, disk, each and every workstation keeps the local copy of the data. I mean the access files, right? And if in case the server, uh, which is, uh, you know, hosting the data uh, fails, your data is available in your workstation. So now in this case, um, what happens? This workstation provides support for other people, those who are accessing the data. So, but it is be a read only access. Uh, they cannot modify it. that. What is the disadvantage here? The updates to this cached file will fail. Uh, that's only disadvantage, but the, still the data is accessible here and networking and communication so the users get a feel of you know they are working on a local file and it is also optimized for WAN so that's an another advantage you can share your files across your WAN network as well and the system management volumes can be moved from one server to other server without the notice of other users that's again a great advantage now each and every uh, site maintains its volumes okay now uh, you can migrate these volumes to uh, some other server without the user notices it uh, because you know this particular uh, you know site needs some administrative task or the particular host which is uh, hosting the data 
need some administration uh, task so that uh, this can be migrated to some other server it can again uh, point to your root file system so the users will not notice that obviously uh, because this is happening purely in the back end so set of disadvantages uh, like uh, the larger files are there if it is greater than the size of the cache absolutely it is going to be a nightmare that creates a lot of problems uh, because your system will be in busy in performing what uh, catching of files and transferring kind of a thrashing kind of situation would happen uh, from here and um, no reuse of uh, read data again that is another problem with the system and uh, no built-in fine grain privileges along with the AFS and there are uh, additional tools uh, you know there which has to be used for uh, the fine grained privilege delegation. So there are set of alternative solutions available. So Arla is an alternative solutions and this is again a Coda is a research based project. Uh, Intermezzo is only for Linux and uh, NFS uh, it's basically a good choice for um, if uh, you know irrespective of uh, the you know operating system basically um, this is uh, open AFS is a crafts platform solution which will work across your Windows uh, network as well as your Linux network and Mac network and uh, NFS is also one of the good choice uh, so I would recommend uh, NFS uh, also gives a feel to the user that you know they are working on their local directory the the the, the shared directories can be mounted into the clients or workstations um, and it appears to the users like their own directory so that's all about uh, open AFS so these are the references um, you can go to these references and get more details about uh, Android file system thank you thank you for watching